This is our second live broadcast of Paratech 10 and Unity Motorsports. We've got some interesting things to show you. But first, let's make sure that we've got Charlie on board here. Yeah, he's in the backstage. Broadcasting from down there. Charlie, can we hear you? No, nah, he's not on ours yet. Right, okay. So it looks like we've got a full house in here so far. Yeah. Let's let's greet our guests before we get started here. Yeah. Let's see who's here. Nobody. Tony's Hot Rod Garage. Hey, we got to call him after this is over. Tony. Uh, who's calling you? Mark Colbert. Oh, he's the guy that. Yeah, I need to talk to him later on. But yeah. Not quite now. Yeah. So we got nobody, Tony's Hot Rod Garage, um, Brian Kiker, let's see here, One-Eyed Cat, uh, Robert Weathers, ah, but Charlie's put, in the put, chat. Put Robert down, right down here. I want to see what he said. I was talking to him uh, not too long back, right? Uh, oh, yeah, right there. Right, yes, Robert. I so, see you've uh, posted here. Right, blah, 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 blah. Hey, I'll be calling you uh, midweek. So if you've got any questions or anything to tell me, let's talk about it maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, right? So we've got an awesome video tonight or show or whatever well, we, you want to call we it. We hope we have, yeah. We've got a bunch of people lined up. We've got some exciting things yeah. to talk about, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Yep. So, um, without further ado, what do you want to talk about first? Well, let's talk about the things that we're having success with, right? Um, what I'd like to do is let's. We've got this uh, head down here for your um, crown pick. Mm -hmm. Tell them about the intake manifold. All right. So I'm going to be having a video coming out later tonight um i did an intake test on my crown vic um, and i can't get this up a big chunk of aluminum should point the chambers uh, yeah there we go so anyways i did an intake test that video will be up on unity motorsports garage tonight but this is the crown jewel of what makes a four six run yeah. I know that there's people out there that can make them run with a uh, PI head, but there's no... They're not going to compete with this. No, right? they're not. Right. Out yeah. of the box, this will out horsepower even the best modified PI I mean, what we did 10, 15 years ago was yeah. light years ahead of what people can And do. this is the latest version, which has had some yeah small changes in it. So we're not testing this stock because no. like, we've already done that. We know it works yeah unbelievably well what we're doing now is fine tuning what's there now there is one downside to this because the head is so good stock <laughs> it's not very difficult no it, it, it is, is a bit difficult to find big improvements on it however we're going for whatever we can get because yeah. eventually that motor has got to fly right? yeah i mean we need it to really make some horsepower but it's got to be a sleeper. That's all right. But that's the whole. Oh, and one other thing porting these heads, piece of cake. There ain't nothing to it. Right. Basically, all you've got to do is what Trip Flow would have done if they could have cast as accurately as we grind them. Yeah. Right. We know where they wanted to go with this. And basically, it's a question of cleaning up the port, skinning it down the guide boss, and doing a good valve job on it. It's and a, you're there. Or rather, a brilliant valve job. It's got a good valve job. And you'll get the best out of that cylinder head. Now, the thing is, is it will out torque either the three or four valve heads. Yeah. Won't out horsepower them ultimately, but it will out foot pan them. And, and that's, that's, what, what, I need, that's need. what I need in a Crown V. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, there was a question up here about Mission Impossible. Yep. You're going to get all the Mission Impossible updates here shortly because we've yep. got somebody waiting backstage 
that I'm excited to have on the channel. So, are we going to tell him about Mission Impossible? Or yeah, is Sammy arrived? I, I think he's out there. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I heard a little voice. You can't be that so, small, Sammy. I'm coming. I'm coming. Made a Ford guy, and I'm a little slow. Woo! Watch <laughs> out! <laughs> so, <laughs> look at this cat right here. This is Sammy Pace Hour. Hey. Now, he's his way bigger than me. <laughs> his channel is Boost is my friend. Now. This dude is diehard LS guy. Man, y'all scoot over this way, I'm, man. I look like a big cookie monster in this thing. I'm diehard LS on Facebook. Yeah, this will move back a bit, right? So, anyways, the reason why he's here is we have some really cool things that we're getting ready to dive into in the LS world. Now, I have some fun. I'm not an LS guy, but I know I, one. I mean, you've been having any fun already? Oh, yeah. He, he's going to be. After this, he will always be an LS guy. I, <laughs> you oh, might be right. I don't know, but I doubt it. It's hard. It's hard not. It's hard not to. I promise you. So, David, tell him what we're going to do with LSs. Yeah. Here's one the thing. This is, for us, this looks like it could work out really well. Sammy here wants to upgrade his cylinder heads. And AFR, now I've I've known the guys at AFR since the, the day they opened the door. Long time. Long time. Long, long time. Anyway, what they've done is they have sent us their new, is it a 195cc? No, it's 239cc runner. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Their new, and it's a relatively small runner, right? For an LS, they've sent us the head before it's available to do a test. So, Sammy, pull it up and stand it on the bench there. Right, now, turn it around so they can see the chambers. So this now, is a we, we only received these the other day, right? And I can tell you now, before I've even tested it, it comes under the heading of a work of art, right? The chambers are cast beautifully. I mean. They, well, you know, like we're going to flow test this thing probably Tuesday or Wednesday, but it looks really good. And I'm saying that based on my now 60 years of porting cylinder heads. There, there's not many people have got more mm. porting experience. It's very nicely made. Uh, and so the weird thing is, now, Sammy, you correct me because I'm not an LS guy because I measured these valves yesterday. Yeah. These are a 208 160. Yeah. Stock is a 2165. Uh, and a 2 uh, uh, one, nine, uh, 157. One, five, one, yeah, 159. One, five, five, nine. Nine. Yep. So, so these valves are slightly smaller. Slightly yeah. Smaller. But they're less shrouded. Yes. And that's, that's the key to making horsepower. Yeah. So. It's going to be interesting to see what they do on the flow bench. These are 239 cc. How much? How big is the stock? I think they're 268. So they're um, big. They're yeah. big. They're big for a factory yeah. head. They're big. The biggest thing with the LS3 stuff that you run into though is the exhaust. It ain't so Here, much. Let's get this, this out of the way. Yes, yeah. So the the stock L L92. <laughs> yeah. The stock L92 and the stock square port the LS3 stuff. The exhaust is where they're really stuck because you got that big old runner for the intake, but then getting it out of the motor is where you run into the problem, the problem with them with a stock head. Yeah. So the reason why we picked Sammy is because as soon as they sent these things to us, I'm sitting there thinking, what are we going to do with these things? Yeah. I'm not an LS. How, like, how are we going to test them? You know, so number flow number to flow number, but track number well, to which you pull. Look, right. Here's the here's the deal. We don't have a dyno mule at the moment. Yeah. Right. So what's the ultimate goal? Going Go fast. faster on the track. track. Yeah. So because look, I've been testing AFR heads for so many years on the dyno. It's like they always work. It, yes. It's almost boring, right? So what we don't do very often is pull them out of the box, put them on a motor, and see how fast they go. Now, Sammy has got a truck, yeah. an S10 truck, with the LS engine in it with stock heads. Yeah. 
So we're just going to take these heads as they are after we flow tested them and done a review on them. Yeah. And stick them on the truck and see how much faster it goes. Now, do you want to divulge what it really yeah, yeah, No, no, it's good. So so the truck is an 85 S10. It was my wife's brother's truck. He burned up in a house fire back in 2004. I tracked the truck down in 2009. It was a 355 with aluminum heads on it. At that time, the truck would run 80s at like 87 mile an hour and mm -hmm. got like four miles to a gallon. Yeah. Had a 650 double pump for it. It was a 530 lift cam in it. It was a hot oh, It was cool. For, yeah. what, for the time, it was cool. I swapped a bone stock 5.3 in it, not knowing halfway about nothing, and it went 8.20. And I was like, well, hey, now I gained a lot of gas mileage, a lot better to drive. So the new motor that's in the truck I just put together is really a bunch of scrap parts from different builds. I wound up a few years ago, I got a 403 cubic inch LS motor off a guy that had spun a cam bearing, and ultimately it had spun a main bearing. Well, I turned around and Gave me five hundred dollars for the motor, which was a heck of a smoking deal. Mm -hmm. Had the cam bearing fixed in the block, had the crank turned, put this thing together. I sold the guy the cam because he couldn't get the cam out of the back for two hundred dollars. So I wound yeah. up with nothing in this motor. Put it together, put it in the truck, and at that time the truck would run six ninety two to seven O's and yeah. like anywhere from ninety eight mile an hour to like a hundred and one. Yeah. Solid deal for the money I had in it, considering at that time it was still streetable. It was oh, yeah, streetable. It streetable. crowds it all the time. And, streetable. and literally, like, I had by the time doing all the machine work, I had probably $700 in this motor. So I was tickled. Moving fast forwards, recently I wound up and was on Marketplace looking around. You got talking to a friend of mine about a 5 3 motor. Mm -hmm. Went to pick it up, show up at the guy's place. It's a long block, and he won $500 for it. Well, when he picks it up, I noticed it had square ports on it. Oh, my mind tells me that 2165 valve <laughs> won't fit on a 53. So I'm like, it has the accessories on. So I'm like, that ain't no 53. I said, that's probably a 6 or a 6 2. Yeah. So I couldn't count the money out fast enough. Right. <laughs> you, you've got to slow things down. So you look, look too yeah. 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 You got to play so, the part. Yeah. So I said, 500. He said, yep. I said, here you go. Didn't turn it over. Nothing. I, well, I was buying it. So I told my son, I said, that's a 6 or a 6 2. My mom lived down. I was in Gastonia. My mom lived. In Clover. Mm -hmm. So I swing by our house, I turn it over, it turns over, come home, sell the heads the next day for $400, the stock one that was on that motor, because I already had my motor together. So you got a $100 engine. You better say hi to your mama. She's hey, watching. mama. <laughs> so I wound up, I had a $100 6.2 liter aluminum block, pulled the rotating assembly out, saw it for $200. So I wound up $100 in my pocket, free block. Took the six oil part. Caden had run it low on oil at the track. He hadn't checked oil in yeah. a year. He was running it. So I had to get everything repaired on it. Went on eBay, found a set of heads for three hundred. I know I didn't set a set of pistons for three hundred dollars. Yeah. So because that motor was a turbo motor, it was a low compression motor. Yeah. Bought flat top pistons for it. They were uh, three hundred dollars. Shipped to my house. Needed one set of rings on it. Put it together. Machine work. I wound up I think eight or nine hundred dollars in this deal. First time at the track. Didn't run what I wanted to run. Got out there and it went like a 694. And I was like, something's wrong with this truck. Drove it to the track, drove it home, got home. I noticed it was missing, had a burnt plug wire. Fixed the plug wire, took it back to the track the following week, went a 655. At Hello. A, yeah. yeah. At 105 mile an hour. So I was like, man, that, that's what I'm talking about. Because I knew it would run 640s or 650s. Putting yeah. it together it was my goal. So here, here's the thing about Sammy. I... I watch Sammy from afar. There is nobody that works harder to get to the drag strip to race than this guy. Now, part of that problem is because he messes with LS and blows them up every yeah. single week. <laughs> so that's why he's an expert. That's right. right. Well, that's, you know, somebody who hasn't made a mistake, yeah, hasn't made anything. Don't know what they've done. You don't know. You don't know whether you gain or you lose. So right. That, that's the thing about like, from breaking stuff than anything. anything. Well, I've been the person that, like, I go places. So I grew up on the poor side. My parents were cheap. We grew up. You may do what struggle. you had. So if I come to your shop and you have money, a lot of people that typically have money, they'll throw away something that I see that's fixable. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's a piece of money, you can weld it back together. There's something there. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, He's a MacGyver, yes, by the way. I was a big fan of MacGyver growing up. See, big, big fan I was, too. And that's why I am the way I am, you know? Yeah. Like, so, anyways, the truck we took it today, 
and it went a 648 at almost 106 mile an hour off the off the trailer first path tickled blown away like absolutely awesome so for you quarter mile guys that's knocking on the door of a nine second truck as that, it sit on motor that yeah. a 16 year old can drive to school tomorrow that drives yeah. around drives it to the track drives it home i mean I that's mean, impressive yeah that's impressive yeah. that's faster than casper so i've got my work cut out for me when i get a real transmission yeah. but that truck's 1500 i know but still yeah, it don't that, matter that truck, that truck with the driver like the truck honestly with um, an, L, an s10 with an iron block in it is about the full interior on is 2,900 pounds plus the driver. Really? It's they, not light. Yeah, wow. this, my truck is has aluminum block in it. So aluminum block is about 108 pounds, 109 pounds, depending on which variant you have. My truck without a driver is 2,800 pounds on the nose plus whatever the driver is. Yeah. That's where it is. So that, that's the biggest benefit. That is light. When you're cheap. And you don't spend a lot of money they better be lightweight if you want to yeah. go fast yeah michael we appreciate the super chat we really do that's what keeps the lights on and helps us do what we do so here, here's we doing? here's the thing there's no there's channels out there where you can watch all the flow numbers right there's channels out there where you can see people going to the racetrack there's channels out there where you can see dyno numbers, but you never get to see all of it, the results, the results yes. in one place. And so that's the whole goal with us teaming up here. I'll be helping with Sammy. I'd like to get these things on. You just dyno that thing not too long ago. Yeah, it, right? made, it made on Nigel's dyno. Now, keeping the fact that it, like, remember this dyno reads low, low for like power. It's not, you're not. Well, I'm not worried numbers, about that. I'm just but worried we about have a baseline. Yes, we have a baseline. The truck, the last time we had on the dyno, it made 418 is what it made when we had it on the dyno. Okay. So, so we have a baseline, a legit baseline of what it does plus track ETs. So already. once right. we flow test these heads, then we'll put them on the truck, yep. dyno test it, then yep. off the shady side we go. Same tuner, same driver. It's not going to be no, Nothing no smoke and mirrors. We ain't trying yeah. to blow smoke up. Nobody is. We're going to put them on stock. Yes. yes. Next step. Ne next once tomorrow, we do that. I'm going to call my guys at uh, AFR, AFR and I'm going to ask them for a, a head that's uh, a, blend. a blend or something like that. You know, usually when I ask them for a blend, they don't have one because their castings are that good that they that are done in the US. Well, it's done abroad are pretty good because they won't accept anything that's second rate. But here's the thing. So I say, do you have a blam? And it's the answer is usually no. So they send me a brand new casting. So what I'm going to do with that, just the casting, casting in two valves, right, is I am going to section it up stock so that you can see all the ports in it and everything. Then I'm going to modify one and show you on the casting where I took the metal off, a bit like I did with the... yeah. The LS1 had the, the 243 or 706 yeah, that we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and here's, I'm going to make a bet now. The metal we take out of the port is going to be minimal to yeah. get to where we, we've got something. That's the the profile of this runner is really good just by looking yeah, at it. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. excited about that. And well, once I've got the best I can do out of that head, then we'll take the heads off port them put them back on again and see what the game and see what yeah. the games are now what intake manifold you got it's got stock ls3 so, so the ls the stock ls3 honestly is about the best intake they have yeah. the is this carburetor or fuel injector? fuel injector right okay so i'm looking forward to it it's going to be really good content for all of sammy yeah. david myself like i said for people like us, it's, it's great because, like I said, it's the whole package. It's not just your numbers. It's Look, not just this. But like I said, yeah. there's always like numbers are great. But there's always a whole other side. You still got to substantiate it's got those numbers in the real exactly. world, right? So, so here's the thing. Now, Sammy didn't know I was going to do this, but he's getting close to ten thousand subs. Close. You're like fifty like, subs away. away I think. Yeah. There are there are 167 people in this live chat all of y'all need to go to boost is my friend 
and subscribe to his channel. I just posted a link to it in the chat a while back. Oh, and talking about boost. Hang on. We we got a super somebody said we missed a super chat. Let me go back. Uh we talked about that one. Andy347 495. Can a head gasket be reused if the engine was never ran? It's a Felpro 1047. I can tell you that I have. Hey, Jim. As if, long as you if it's good. If it's a composite gasket, like I said, composite gaskets, sometimes they'll stick. Sometimes if it pulls yeah. the it'll off, pull the laminate it. off. Of it. It. But if it's a, if it's a multi-layer steel gasket, I don't care if it has five million miles on it. You copper can. spray and put it right back on, you will not have a problem out of it. See, that's another thing. I've always put copper spray on it. Every time. Listen, the way I see, people people hate on it. Oh, they got a shift. They got that's a bunch of that's a bunch of malarkey. I'm gonna tell you like this. When I was coming up, I had a multi-layer steel head gas on me species, but I started out with turbo DSMs. I started out with turbo four probes and I moved to DSMs see, because the market was there. See, John Wilburn says, I'm not an LS guy. No, he's straight. He's talking about me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but with me, uh I had Hi, John. I put a multi-layer steel head gas on me species and it, it, it pushed water. The next time I turn around and put it on, I copper sealed. I didn't have no more problem. We've been a 424 at 170 mile an hour with a stock set of LS9 head gaskets with copper seal on them. So until somebody can tell me something different, <laughs> I let, believe in what I believe. Let, 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 let me back that I up. just put the Lying link to up. his channel in there again. So y'all 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 go over there and do y'all scribing to him. My friend Mervyn, Mike. You can actually see the work truck. Crew chief when I go to the Caribbean. Right, he's used multi layer head gaskets because you can't just go down to the, the local uh, parts dealer and get one for uh, Ford small blocks and small block Chevys and big block Chevys. Some of them he's used as many as 10 times mm -hmm. every time he sprays as long as you don't mess them up. In a as, long, <laughs> as many as I blow it up, I promise you. I, I only replace them when, they, when they're blown See, out. he is honest. I promise you. he is honest. So I also got something else. I'm gonna tell you. Can I tell that? I'm gonna tell y'all something else. So I, I, I am a LS guy, and I hate on coyotes all the time. I always have. It's not rocket flying. It's not knock it. But I'm gonna tell it's you bad. something. Bad. But I've done a lot of work over the years. A lot of people don't realize. Like I work on predominantly Fords. I love Ford Green Money. Most of my customers are Ford people <laughs> because they're like most Chevrolet people. They run say dying is crappy. Yeah. Ford people will fix your grandpa's truck stuff yeah. like that. But you know, Caden has that car from Justin Harris mm -hmm. that's coming out. So I can't, I can't gonna, wait to have a car yet. Yes. So um, um, I'm working on a deal yeah. right now to pick up a uh, guys, to pick I up just, a, just thought of something here, right? I think I just heard Tom come in through the door. Yeah, whilst I, I, I know he's bringing his cylinder head over. Yeah, right. Whilst I'm talking to Tom on here, uh, and what's that? For, it's for water injection, it's got a lubricant in it. Okay. Right. Mm. Um, the I know the guy that makes this. Okay. And he uses it in his blown turbo diesels. Okay. Some of them are doing 100 psi. Heck yeah. Right. Uh, so let me show that to the the. Uh, hey, I'll let you have a bottle of this to see what you think. Okay. Of it. Right. But guys out there running turbos with water injection. This has got uh, about an ounce. You put this in four parts per gallon, four mm -hmm. ounces per gallon, right? So it's very low uh, dilution, but it totally stops any uh, uh, corrosion, right? Um, you get this. I tell you what. Where do you get I'll, it from? I'll put that at the end of the video at the bottom, right? Well, right here it's, it rules me out. It says perpetual. Professional use only. Oh yeah, we're done. We're done. I'm done. Sense the wrong people. <laughs> no, I'm not it's, it's, it's really it's good stuff. Mark, Mark Kohlberg's uh, stuff, right? Mark yeah. is. Uh, yeah, I've known him for a few years now. Right, and he has been over on the side of it for yeah. four people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Sammy, uh, I appreciate, I appreciate you coming up. And so, I will be getting up yeah. with you after we get these flowed. Yeah, can we're, you? We're could, gonna get them on the I tent? send you and Sammy off to get two yeah. valve springs out of there so we can show them the ports for the light. Yeah, I can yeah, go do that right now. You yeah. keep you keep them. Uh, Thomas, 
You right there. Thomas, your shift is you, up. You buddy. put your head all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The pre eco boost coming in the house. Stick it down here, right? Stick it down here. Now, Thomas races a 2.3 Mustang, right? Move the head over there a bit so we can see it. I'll move around here. Right. I don't want it blurring you out, though. Can you shift it a bit, a bit more to me, right? And come in this side. Okay. Right. There we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. Yeah, I know you're there. <laughs> Move up a bit more. This is the uh, quick Esslinger Deport Aluminum. Head. Deport yeah. Aluminum Head. Now I used to be pretty close to Dwayne Esslinger, who was the guy that started the company. Well, his son's running it now. And uh, although Ford sell this with a part number, he's the one that developed the head. Uh, now, the, the idea was the head had to fit everything else. So it's got these stupid ports on it, right? Now look at this. They designed a cheap manifold so that they could make a head more expensive. But the, the, the manifold has the runners going from the two barrel carburetor straight like this to each cylinder. So you get three different, well, actually it's closer to four different cylinders, but these are the center ones here are very similar. But this end and the other end are opposite. And the thing is, is the swirl goes one way on one and it's good. And it goes the other way on the other and it's bad. So you need different timing on each of these cylinders it's ridiculous anyway the thing is is Dwayne did this head and in spite of the uh, things he was stuck with what right, he got to do this uh, it was it had the ability to transform a turbo 2.3 two valve head now Thomas is still working on his and his power is going up and I'll let him tell you how much horsepower is making. Well, we made 733 on 35 pounds on a dyno jet uh, when the engine was still a 2.3 liter. And now we're going to three liters with it. <laughs> now right? we're going to a three liter and we... Um... <clears throat> now, the thing is, is he's brought this cylinder head in to see what changes it's going to need with that bigger displacement, right? So I've got to take a look over it and see what we can do now it's also had quite a lot of use on it it's been very reliable but it's kind of hammered the seats a bit hasn't it yes right so we we got to look yeah. at that anyway so that that's a, a deal there and you can get to use this stuff with it right we're going to put the boost up probably to around 40 psi and I'm anticipating that with 180 inches instead of mm -hmm. 150, yeah. it's going to make four digits. Mm, I think the first run you'll get will be at well over 800, <laughs> right? But it will need you. Now you were saying your box allows you to time all these cylinders yes, different. It does. You'll, I bet you find 30 horsepower there, yeah. right? Because when we talk about difference in one of them, is four degrees different to the other right the, the bad burning cylinder which is which one it is this one the bottom one um this the swirl is almost non-existent it's a slow burner and uh you know we don't have much time to burn it anyway and it's just a slow burner but yeah go and stick that in my yes, sir. shop then Absolutely. thomas and uh um we'll uh take a look at that um right so until the other guys get back and charlie i'd switch you on here if i knew how the hell to do it right uh i don't know if any other people can see you down there or not so let me go over a few things that we're we're doing here other than this cylinder head stuff first polycore 
right? I am going to be releasing the next video on that very shortly. I've almost finished the exhaust. I'm just setting up the, the uh, seat and guide machine now to uh, cut the exhaust seats uh, on it, and then it'll be just detail work. Now, uh, aha, here we go. Now, have we got a flashlight we can look through the ports? Uh, let's see here. They're actually not that bad, but there's room for improvement. It's a nicely cast port, right? And everything's that. Yeah, that's nice. Everything's there to make it a deal where it's skinny down the guide boss. The short turn is really uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna it's wide. There's not gonna be much we're gonna find there. Right here. Right. Um, there is a what compression are you that. running? It's about 1171, if I remember. Right. Do you know what the chain receipt is? 72. No, no, mine have been cut. My head, that's not even all my heads have been cut. They're dead to, uh, they we took it's 62 cc's is what my heads are cut. We're yeah. going to have to cut these to 62 yep. cc's. Yeah, to make them, make them yeah. 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 That way it's an actual AB. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because when we, when we done the truck, it had, uh, that, them local, them pieces <laughs> were negative 18 cc, so we decked the heads. To try to get some correction when it had the iron block. Okay. So I just transferred those over. So we got a work cut out. We have, yes. I'll be talking um, to Eric or whoever. So oh, 318. Yeah. It's that time. Yep. Uh, appreciate you, man. Appreciate have it. It's nice to meet you. Let's keep in touch here yes, about this because I want to prioritize this because Definitely. the guys at AFR have been good enough to. Yes pull the stops out to get me that i need to pull the stops out yeah. to get results right yeah. now exactly. but we we've introduced the re readers <laughs> He's still living throwback in throwback yeah we've introduced our pan yes. our panel of critics yeah. here is that right guys yeah pan panel of critics right so now we got to get those we got to get results we got to get yeah, the results we got, i've got to flow them and can you get them faced off? Yeah. Right. Because uh, right now I'm with my my no, no, machine's sure. tied up with doing belt jobs. No, no definitely we take right. care of it. That's fine. Right. Andy, okay. it, as long as it's it's the blue type gasket, as long as it doesn't come apart when you take it loose, there's no issue in torquing it back down. That's the only thing. You can do it. Now who said that? Andy three forty seven ninety five. Yeah, I've actually I done. Do you think he's got a great name? Yeah, oh, yeah, he does. It's a great name. I mean, I've and done that before. Anyone that doesn't believe push rod length and all ask that. His stuff. Mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to well, move into the three eighteen. Yes, right. We now we've got some positive positive things in terms of performance. But some of you may regard this as it's wandering off the original goal. However, what we are trying to do here all the time, our ultimate goal is to do well by the kids at St. Jude's. That's the final goal. So if we make a change that you don't approve of, tough. <laughs> tough. Get over it because right, we're going to do it. Yeah, we do value your opinion, but think of it this way, guys and girls. Yep. It's the kids that matter most. Yeah, because ultimately this is going to end up, one of y'all is going to end up with this engine, and we want it to be a really nice engine for whoever buys yeah. it or whatever yeah. the case yeah. is. And all of that money is going to be, uh donated straight to st jude's yep. so that was the original intent on that yeah but you know the thing about it is does someone out there really want a 318 with regular heads on it and all that i don't know well i've got somebody that we need to talk to who hang on i'm gonna bring him in oh charlie yes yeah charlie hi guys Right. Charlie, what's up, buddy? You're just as handsome as ever. <laughs> I was going to say, David, you've never oh, looked prettier. Please. 
I'm a lot smaller now. Well, excellent, you, excellent. You go on to the plus there. Great and to be I, on, guys. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, there you go. Here, Charlie. So, this is the first time that all three of us has been together on a live chat actually discussing this engine build. Yeah. So, as most of the viewers that are here, they know they have been following Charlie's work, and he has done a immense amount of work on those 318 heads yeah. and intakes and all of that. And I think it's time for all of us to get our minds together to figure out where we're going with yeah, this. Yeah, I think that this was Andy's original suggestion here, right? He, what he's, he presented me with a situation where he was saying, you know, if we change the direction of our focus just slightly, we can, if we change it, I'm going to use an analogy here. If we change it just 5%, we can get 20% better results. Yeah. Right. And I thought about this and the most likely wanted engine is one that is going to not just be good for a sleeper, but be good for something that isn't a sleeper. Yeah. Right now, Charlie has done a great job on the cylinder heads and I'm about to do the last bit of the grinding on the block before it goes off for boring and all yeah, that. Yeah, so we're going to sonic I, test. Yeah, it. we're going to sonic test. Probably next week, we'll, yeah. we'll have a, a, a deal here coming out on both Andy's channel and mine. We'll have sonic tested the block. I got a sonic tester. And I will have ported the oil ways the way I want them. And, and these Chrysler blocks don't look like they need a much, very much work in there. Also, the crankcase is tidy. Right, so yeah. all we got to do is round off the bottom of the bore. So, guys, I'm not seeing, and I could be wrong here, but I'm not seeing much work to be done on the block. Now, we've got a situation where we have a piston and conrod manufacturer who wants to support the deal. So we thought, well, let's let's do that. I still got all that work to do on seven other rods over there, mm -hmm. right? Which is going to take at least a week. Yeah, and this company is off. So you could do the rods like we've done, but this company is offering us a set of rods, which are about the same weight, with a set of race lightweight race pistons, right? Which will mean that we've now got a bottom end, because the crank's pretty tough. We've now got a bottom end that we could whiz to eight thousand RPM. Yeah, if now, need be later on. So what we're going to do is build the bottom end this way. Now, if you build it with the pistons we've already shown you and the rods we've already shown you, it won't be much less power, right? It just won't have the RPM capability. Right. So, but you could, you still could go that way. So, right. Charlie. So, what, Charlie's, we put Charlie's head heads on it. And uh, Charlie, do we want to run a stock one or he's got uh, all the flow numbers? I've got, I've got I've got a couple plans that I think we should do. Okay, well, you all right, fire, you fire go ahead with your plans. Okay, what I did was I did three intake manifolds. We have a very low rise stock dual plane with a very small plenum that we can bolt the BBD right directly to. That would be our first test, right with the the. 318 cylinder heads and the exhaust manifolds I did. That might be a little tough because with the BBD that I modified, I only got about 170 CFM from the carb right through to the cylinder head. That might be tight to get our one cube per one horsepower per cube. Yeah. But I also had my friend make the custom spacers for that intake, which really helps right. that intake a lot. I think that should be no problem getting our one horse per cube with the really bad intake manifold. Right. Next intake manifold is a throttle body injection manifold. Okay. Hold on. I'm, I'm having a, a, a computer issue here. It's not charging. Well, the throttle body injection manifold is a lot 
is a lot better design. Right. And that, that we should get better power out of that. Okay. The third manifold is a Chrysler cast iron single plane. The old now, we can, 73 type intake? Yeah, like a 273. That'll okay. make good power. It'll be down a little bit in the mid-range torque, but it'll make good power because it flowed quite well through that. If I cut out, guys, I'm sorry. It looks oh, like this power fine. supply for this computer died. Yeah, that's pretty much like an old school Holly Street Dominator. <laughs> it, it, you know what it looks a lot like? It looks a lot like the uh, Torker 2 for the small block Chevy. That's how it yeah. designed. Very yeah. low rise. Uh, square plenum, but I did some work to the plenum. Uh, did uh, I did quite an extensive uh, work with that? That one flows pretty good through the cylinder heads. Now, I like that David said it, we can get 8,000 RPM out of the bottom because even with the stock valve sizes, the 178, 1.78 intake, 1.5 exhaust, and the flow numbers that I have, if we can spin that to eight thousand rpm with a real intake manifold i.e like a victor jr mm -hmm. and a real real carburetor like a 750 with a set of headers i expect those heads to pull about 500 horsepower yeah now so that'll be a cam that'll be a cam about 600 lift probably about 235 duration it's not going to need a wide lobe center because it's about an 80 percent exhaust ratio the exhaust is actually quite a bit better than the intake I, hang on one second. I don't mean yep. to interrupt. Hang on. Hang on. So what's happening with Mission Impossible? Well, that's what we're talking about. Tony with Tony, has a, that's exactly what we've been talking about. The one thing that I do want to mention is Tony, in one of his lives, mentioned that he didn't want to have anything to do with it. And I have yet to still talk with Tony, but he mentioned it in his live, I think, a week or two ago when I was watching it. So... There you go. Well, Tony's got a lot going on as well. Hasn't yeah, he? he just moved into that new shop and all that other stuff. So he's got a lot on his plate. And he's in Middle Tennessee, too. So um, now where were we on that? Oh, yes. Now, I like your plan. Uh, I like that being the, yeah. finish, the finished product. Well, wait a minute. Weren't we going to try some aluminum heads on it? Well, I don't know. If we get 500 horsepower with the stock cast iron. Well, but but we have a cylinder head company that wants to be in on the, the deal. Well, I guess we can now, here's the, here's the thing. Whoever wins the raffle can have the engine in any state they want. They can have it looking like it's a total sleeper stock, right up to an aluminum headed four barrel genuine race motor. Right? Yeah. So we thought that would be more expansive because we'd be showing people all the way through all of these different models. Yeah. Basically, thanks to you, Charlie. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are welcome. Anything for St. Jude's, no problem. Um, I think it's going to be pretty awesome to have an engine sitting on the diner to go from 320 horsepower, <laughs> do the, you know what I'm saying? Do the game. David originally said when, when he first thought of this, that it will gain 100 horsepower by going to a real intake manifold in a four barrel. Yeah, that's 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 insane. You, you never see that type stuff. You talk about a magazine headline back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But uh, but it, it we're still facing the challenge of making it make scary in power worst, and look in soft. its worst state. It depends how good you guys do with the BBD carburetor. Yeah, now, I well, I would be pouring the damn thing out and we're making going to, it into a, a, a siphon carburetor. Yeah, it might not be very drivable down low, but it will. We thought about doing a mono blade. Yeah, you know, making it that make would be a huge. That is really the bottleneck. Yeah, the BBD and that really bad first dual plane intake manifold, the old truck style, very small. And I did a ton of work to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's tiny. Yeah. That's what well, that's our limiting factor right there. The exhaust manifolds really aren't that bad after they've been ported out. We'll yeah, be, we should be able to get good power with them. Metal out of those things, didn't you? Oh yeah. 
They they got a lot of well, work. Well, that should be a second off the quarter mile right there. So let okay. me ask you, to get the power increase, we shaved a ton off the front of the car. Exactly. <laughs> so um, which manifolds did you end up using to grind? Was it just 318 manifolds or what was the? Yeah, they're all 318 manifolds. Okay. Um, like I said, one was a, a, an older style pickup dual plane. Then we have the throttle body injection. That needs a spacer. We have a spacer for it. I had a guy that was nice enough to donate that intake and a spacer for it that the BBD could go to. Yeah. And well, uh, Charlie, Charlie, can you just hold on a moment? Sure. Hi, Charla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's on, the, she's on the chat. That's my oldest. So let me ask you this. As far as valve train, we're going to keep the stock rockers and like what me and you talked about, I think it's probably best that we start out with a big open chamber and go that route. Because once you start maybe shaving the head, you're going to get into push rod length issues, getting geometry right. I, I, was, I, was, th I was right along the same thought as you, Andy. I, I To really keep the idea of the project intact, we have to leave the open chambers open chambers. Yeah. Now DV wanted to cut a hundred thousands off off the deck. I don't know how much of an interference that's going to give us on our intake manifolds. Everything's set up the way it is now. Right. It has, good, it, it has a good, uh, you know, uh, transitions. Right. As soon as we mill a hundred thousands off those heads, all that goes out the window. All yeah. that goes out the windows. It may not be worth it. I need to make an apology here. Pro active one right one of my problems and i think charlie will back me up on this instantly is have mill will machine he, <laughs> he, he likes grinding right so a lot of things like oh the manifold will fit have mill will machine <laughs> it's a bit like uh, the richard boone, richard boone in have gun will travel. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about it is you, the afterthought of like, oh, this is not the best way to do this after I've done cut the metal. That's the bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm excited about this. I, You know, to be honest, it's with opening you, another door, isn't it? It's right. opening another door. We're taking, picking up the baton and finishing the relay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm excited about that. Uh, are you going to be coming up anytime soon, Charlie? I am hoping to make a trip up sometime in February with all okay. the mission uh, possible. Charlie, stuff. Charlie, just a note here. It is February. <laughs> February. <laughs> Time is flying on us. It is what you said. <laughs> February. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh, I got I got heads for you to pick up, right? Sounds yours, good. Sounds yours good. and others. Now, I, I want to... I wanted to run past David. I personally think even with the stock 3-8 stem valves, they're heavy. I'm pretty sure you could put a, a nice beehive spring on that and be able to spin it to 8,000. Um, probably, but it's a bit of a challenge. Right. That's why I'm giving it to you. Let's make it easier for ourselves and put a lightweight valve. Let me. No, we have to run. We have to run the three yeah. eighths stem valves. All right. So let's do that. So let what me. What about a hollow stem three eighths valve? Well, I have the valves here. So oh, there you go. If you would like to drill them and make no, them hollow. No, 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 no. <laughs> I have a friend called Mr. Ferreira that does that. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Charlie. Well, I, I have something to say about that. Ferreira yeah. valves are really nice. I love them. Favorite brand of valves. If you would have a Ferreira valve made up, now the heads are already done with three eighth guides. They've been bronze walled. They're they're set. They're okay. they're honed. They're they're what we need. Let's rock and roll with that. Let's rock and roll with that. Now, if you wanted to get a Ferreira valve, three eighth stem hollow stem that would be nice but it still has to be That's the stock for the first stage so we won't do that yeah but right. when we get to the second stage we are going to use eight millimeter stems well we'll cross yeah let's cross 
bridges, you know, one at a time. Right. Well, at, when we're using a stock head, I think it would be legitimate in this case yeah. to stick with the three eight valve because of the expense of changing it. But when we go with the aftermarket head, we've already up to here in the expense of an aftermarket head we might as well use eight millimeter guides so millimeter that's a different that's a completely different test and i agree yeah. Yeah. well let me ask you this charlie you know you you mentioned 600 lit yeah uh, anyone who's been around small block mopars knows that once you start getting there we're going to run into issues with installed height is there enough installed height in those heads to get where we want to go I think with a nice beehive, you could do it. Okay. That's, that's what I wanted to know. You're not going to be able to machine a, a lot. Project. A problem. You're not going to be able to machine a lot of spring perch off of uh, the heads because the ports are raised about as high as you could expect to raise them. Right. Which I okay. was trying that's, to do to get the higher lift. That's what I was concerned about, you know, making sure that we have the installed height there. If, to go the big route so beehives beehives like to be you know loaded till they're just about stacked yeah exactly so now i wonder if all of our viewers know that when you do set up beehive springs they if you leave if the spring's not fully utilized i.e you never open the valve far enough to get the coils close it tends to react like it's a more normal spring the way to make them work is to have it so that when it comes to full lift, it is just shy of coil binding. I set them up so that there's only about 10 or 15 thousandths left, right? What that means is that the bottom coils have already stacked and the top coils that aren't stacked now have such a high resonant frequency mm -hmm. that they control the valve uh, impeccably right so when you set up uh, the uh, uh, beehive springs remember tighter is better right now you don't want to you don't want them to uh, coil bind a whole lot that, that's disastrous but you need to have nearly all the coils stacking well and the problem is when you run them with too much room then you get into this, surge and all that, kinds of that, other that is, you start losing all the advantage on them. you will lose control yeah. of the valve train if you're not careful so uh i've got a question here i think this is the exact reason that uncle tony doesn't want anything to do with this and not saying that doing is wrong well we're the one doing the work okay charlie has put in more work than probably both of us and so and in it's going to be our project and that's what we're going to do we're making it our own deal and we're equally invested in it and you know like i said tony doesn't want to be a part of it and that's fine you know um but i'm i'm looking forward to see what we can do i'll let i'll let you guys know i'm certainly not opposed to putting a set of aluminum heads on this when it's all said and done yeah, let's well, just, I mean, let's get some serious dyno runs out of the stock cast iron first. I'm I'm like you. I might we get this thing on the dyno making some serious pulls. I might fall in love with the stock 318. Oh, they'll head. run. Those heads will run. I guarantee it. So let me ask you this. How do you think they compare to the E7s that you've done? Uh the E7s that David and I uh dynoed. I think David dynoed it with a, a bigger cam at some later point because he mm -hmm. stated he got 500 horse out of them. I think yeah. those are the same set. I think that's the same set of heads. It These is. These are, let me just look at my sheet. They're down about 7 CFM on the intake, but they're up 15 on the exhaust. Nice. So... If you got 500 horsepower out of the E7s, I don't see why these wouldn't make 500 horsepower. Yeah. There you go. E7s are 20 degree head. These are 18 degree heads. That's the right. E7s ran a bigger valve, though. We had a 1.97 inch valve. 
Yeah. This is a 1.78. So yeah. I'm doing it with a much smaller uh, valve. I think there's that's pretty impressive. You did some, some killer work, I think, Charles. Yeah, I think Thank you. getting that flow out of that 178 valve, that's impressive. It's you know, it was a day, huge amount of work. When you had to run the factory heads, the fastest car in Europe was a Chrysler, a 302 inch Chrysler. Mm -hmm. Right, that means it had Chrysler heads on it. Mind oh, you, the guy that did the engine only did that engine. It wasn't a company selling engines to everybody. He built that, or rather, one team, one car. Uh, they probably had three or four engines, but he he did the whole lot. Wow. Anyway, got a quick question for the viewers here. Which one? All of them. Okay. Right. All of those that watch the. Um, uh uh video with the can-am car in it so what did you think of that ride around silverstone in the can-am car i would love to do that this this thing well let's put it this way with the weight of the car and that amount of horsepower th this car is about equal to a, a a pro stock car in terms of mile an hour and the quarter from about 10 15 years ago you give me a 1970 can-am car yeah i'm all about it yeah. i'm going i'm the the lola t if I fit in five that i did um in the quarter mile i think it was 201 miles an hour but it was a second slower than a pro stock car because it was a road race car and it didn't leave yeah so another thing <laughs> um for the viewers that are here Charlie, David, and myself, we're going to try to make this a regular occurrence, yep. bringing yep. you guys and gals up yep. to speed. That way you're always in the loop outside the videos as far as where we're at with the 318 project. Like I said, my friend um, Eric Hester at m and &E Engine Services up in Shelby, he said he would donate his time to do all of the block machine work. Nice. Uh, you know to get it up the snuff and so we're going to make that thing as low friction as we possibly can yeah. get it yep because you know what we should ask for andy what's that we should ask for a crank that's not bent yeah we need a crank that's not bent one of the guys that are watching right now yeah has probably got a forge 318 yeah. crank sitting well, in his, his jump pile it's bent. it's bent it's it's not did you see the burn marks on it no yeah it's burned on well, one side of it. Well, we could grind it, but I would rather have a good one to start with. All the work I put into it already. I know. Well, well if you uh, want to grind it, do you want to chance it? Uh, we will check it all out first, right? Okay. So anyway, if anyone out there has a uh, stock 318 crank, uh, be on standby in case yeah. this one is no yeah. good if we can't make yeah. it work. Talking about that, does anybody have the front end of an EcoBoost Mustang, the current one. Because one of the things I'm trying to do here is to mold light covers that are more streamlined with built in, uh, what do they call those little wings at the front? In the lights, right? One of the biggest dr drag things appears to be the way they've styled the front end. I need a, a a front end. It can have some damage to it, so long as the headlights and the grill are okay, so that I can fill it up with filler and mold a, a piece that can then be three D, be scanned and three D printed in clear plastic. So if you've got one and you're not too far from Charlotte, i.e., uh, no more than a couple of hours, I'd say maybe three hours. Yeah, three, something like that. Right. Uh, let's talk. Yeah. So you got anything else that you'd like to add, Charlie, or anything that you would like to plug? Yeah, sure. I'd like to plug. Uh, you really want to be, you want to be nice. Take a look at my daughter's cosmetic site, cgscosmetics.com. Okay. She has, uh, she was in a bad car wreck just before Christmas. She was she was in a bad car wreck just before Christmas, and she made a, 
a shirt with her car that got totaled and yep. uh, she did some artwork and had them produced. So they're available on her website. Uh, she's 21 years old. She has her own cosmetics company. She's a very hardworking kid, not like me. And uh, I would love it if somebody, if you guys would take a look at that website, show wifey the website, that would be great. As far as uh, the Mission Impossible, I, I did a final flow on those heads today. So that'll be, uh, that'll be published sometime this week. Uh, and of course, because I did kind of push my luck with the bowls, I did change the dynamics of the, the port quite a bit. So I could probably get a little bit more out of it when I go through the airspeeds. Right. Talking about airspeeds and stuff like that, we finally got around to a couple of days ago, measuring the pressure drop with various filters in a EcoBoost. It's crazy, right? Oh, it yeah. is crazy. And let me tell you, when I do the video, which I'm probably going to put out towards the end of next week, you will realize that the majority of people who bought Cold air intakes have spent money for no good reason. Yeah. My, my, one of my favorite jobs is a bone stock fuel injected engine. You poured out the throttle body. You poured out all the plastics going to the throttle body. You yeah. poured out the air box and you put a K&N in it. It'll give it a nice kick in the butt. I did that on the Crown Vic. I haven't and it's done only, the it's only a couple hundred dollar. It's only a couple hundred dollar upgrade. Everyone mm -hmm. I've ever done that job for absolutely loves it. Doesn't hurt the emissions. Yeah. And it gets better mileage. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds better when you get on it. Oh, I mean, guys were just like, I can't believe what you did to my car in an afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, right, uh, Tom, you've seen Thomas on here. Mm -hmm. His dad, I've known his dad for a long time, 20, 20 years. Longer than me. 20 years. What's it? It's two, 24, 23 years. Yeah. 23 years I've known his dad. And he's a turbo maniac. Now, we kind of lost touch with seeing each other because he moved to Mexico, Mexico for a while and hopped up cars down there. Uh, I mean, he had a. Did he have a wealthy in-law or something like that? I have no idea, but, right. he, but anyway, that, he's back. He, he's back. Now, what I didn't realize is that other than just working on turbo focuses, which is what he was doing, he's also done a lot of work for other people on turbo Mustangs 2.3s, right? You talk about jump-starting our projects. Yeah. Now, now this guy is not good at turbos he's very good yeah right uh, in that world we is. wouldn't be talking to about him right yeah so what what we've done here is i mean yesterday when he came over i learned about three years worth of modifications that you can do to a mustang in an afternoon five hours yeah yeah right and we have and he was still going at 100 miles an hour. So I'm going to have another meeting in, in the week. And we're going to have some sectioned heads yeah. that he's bringing over that he's worked on. Now, not only does he build engines, he's also got a flow bench and all that that he uses to, to do this. And um, uh, we are going to see what can be done in the way of heads because the stock head has the limitations of the what what what's the word for that? Uh, it's the it's the headfold or header fold. That's that's what he called it. Yeah, because the exhaust manifold is made for it. Yes. Now this is what they've saved me doing. Yeah. They've done pressure measurements across the turbo intake turbo to the exhaust intake manifold rather to the exhaust. And the bottom line is, is the uh, self-contained wastegate type deal is a matter of convenience because efficiency-wise, it's not very good. There's about two pounds of back pressure for every one pound of boost. Yeah. 
we've got to fix that somehow. And guess what? He's already tested the fix, which is marvelous, right? Because I'm going to be moving to that very yeah. soon. Right. So, what did you have to say? Well, uh, I was going to let Charlie go if he has something else. I don't want to go. I want to stay. Stay. Well, <laughs> go get those rain hey. cokes. <laughs> Listen, uh, one of the guys that donated an intake manifold to Mission Impossible is on the chat. He says he has cast 318 cranks. Sweet. He could probably oh, ship it right to you. Really good guy. Broken Tool Garage is his. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We know who that is. He's already, he's yeah. already sent stuff for the project. Awesome. Right. And uh, I'm looking through a comment. Comments so, are coming in faster than we can deal with them. So, yeah, there's a lot. So y'all have any questions y'all want to ask us? Uh, Eric wants to know about, about the nine degree cool. ultra pro heads. Uh, let me see here where that's at. Oh, oh, talking of ultra pro, we've got Don coming on as soon as he can make it for his schedule, right? Yeah, I'd really like to meet Don when I come visit. Dude, uh, he is super can, awesome. We guy. can we can arrange that, right? That cool. would be great. Yeah, he is a great right. dude. But you won't have time to hit, listen to all of his stories, right? Don't, don't hey, forget. you know David talks a lot, man. Don Don can once you fire him up. Once you, you fire Don up him. about all the people that he's worked with, all the big names. I mean, he's pretty much the man behind the gates head. Yeah, I mean, come yeah. on, let's just yeah. be honest. He'll tell, he'll tell the story of the eight head. Yeah. That'd so, David, can you give us an update on the engine build with the nine degree ultra pro heads? That was in crazy uh, small block heads. Yeah. Um, uh, you've already sent those off to Don, right? No, they're oh, in my works. they're in my garage still. I was going to drive them up. Oh, oh, right. What, what flow numbers did you finally get out of them? Well, my peak numbers aren't really much better than yours, but I was able to get 32 extra in the middle. Right. What what was it, about 400? And... I think it came out right around 410. Okay. Four, 410. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. I had 413 in my mind. for. Yeah, I think you did. It was very close. But I wasn't able to – beat your your top end flow numbers because it was originally your port design so what i did is i took your port design and i changed it a little bit here and a little bit there and wound up getting a lot more mid-range so well, we have right more here. yeah if we took 12 points of flow we gained on 10 of those 12 points yeah now don't forget we lost some because those heads were actually mismachined on the intake port and it took metal away from where we needed it. It made the short side turn less. Uh, yes, it would have been better if it was a little taller. You're absolutely I, right. I think Don was getting, but that didn't show up until you got to around about 600 lift. Right. That's not right. Right. Yeah, right at the top end. That's when it showed it, up. It separated the flow, and mm -hmm. we, we got stuck at around. I think mine was 413 and yours was 410, but that's different flow benches. Different different days, yeah, different yeah. flow benches. Uh, and um, Don went, Don's went on up to 440. It, you've got a useful lift to one inch. Wow. Yes. Right? So you got a super chat here, raining slant six with a classic chance of cannonballs. That's pretty good. Uh, while I'll get some different opinions on original Mission Impossible plan, I don't know that Tony appreciates how much work or time Charlie did on the 318 heads. Charlie, Charlie put in, I couldn't imagine how many hours he has. Yeah, on cards. <laughs> they, they put out a missing in action thing at work. He, he, has enough, he, is. <laughs> he has enough cast iron dust that he could build probably five or six more Chrysler heads out of them. <laughs> You know, it's amazing they put so much cast iron in the in the cylinder heads and in the intake manifolds, but it's all in the wrong spots. <laughs> That's the crazy part. It's, it's like if you like just that. moved it a little bit, you could make such killer stuff out of this. Yeah. 
Oh, I was wondering why the factories didn't do that. It was so simple to do. You can cast it any shape you want. That's right. If you've the will to do so. The will. That's exactly yeah. right. It's like I tell people, you can grind any cam you want. <laughs> yeah. You might as well grind the right one. Right. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Speaking yeah. of cams, David, what I was thinking is because the the exhaust is so good on the Mission Impossible, it's really not going to need that tight a lobe center. Right. What do you think about that? Now, uh, wait a minute. My eyes were running then. Right. Just say that again, Charlie. Well, right now we're running about, on the Mission Impossible heads, about an 80% intake to exhaust flow ratio. Yeah. So yeah. According to that, I don't think you're going to need a very tight lobe center. No. Uh, well, so. well uh, it's not quite going to react. What did the program say it needed? I have to run it through the program. That'll happen this yeah. week. Because uh, what are we running for compression? 11 and a half? Something uh, like that. Right. If we so, leave it open chamber, it'll probably be more like 10, 10 to 1. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I'd rather not comment on that until I've got the flow numbers and everything in front of compression. me. Right? Okay. Uh, right now, my, my guessing capability is a bit downhill. I've been tidying up the shop all day. And... God, I am worn out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing a lot of cleaning today. How do you feel about having a bigger intake lobe than exhaust lobe? I've never done that. Just, um, I have. You've sprung that one on me, right? That's yeah. not fair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was your experience with it? I'm curious. Uh, Actually, it was a Crower hydraulic flat tappet. I'm trying to think how long ago it was, 80s. Okay. And uh, Crower actually put a bigger intake lobe on it than an exhaust lobe. And then because I'm a wise guy, I ran a 1.6 rocker on the intake. And it worked really well because the small block Chevy heads I was doing, I was much better on exhaust ports than I was on an intake ports at that point. Ah, that makes sense. I, I see where you're going there, right? Yeah. Uh, and with the Mission Impossible, the exhaust ports are better than the intake ports. So we might might be able to squeak some extra power putting a little bit bigger lobe on the intake than the exhaust. Yeah, yeah. Can, guys, can, I, can I butt in? Um, Robert, don't forget you owe me some photographs of the Mustang, right? I couldn't get to your uh, uh, post just then. But, uh, yeah, see if you can uh, crank those out as soon as possible, right? You got that message? Let me know. Is that him? Yeah. Okay. Right. We talked about that. Are you considering a Mazda 2.3 head with four port exhaust to replace the EcoBoost head? That's one of the things we That's got one on the of the agenda. things we yeah. we talked about the other day. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um anything else that we've got going on that's um hot off the press. Not that we can talk about. We've still got our secret projects. Oh, right. I am just starting on the 100 mile per gallon carburetor. Did it or didn't it exist? <laughs> right. And like I said, that's going to be a good video. Got it, to, you can't read this or view it unless you uh, subscribe first. I am going to have to spend somewhere like three weeks doing it. I need subscribers to do that. I think he's talking about warren johnson <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i might yeah, be wrong I told warren I johnson every day he knows. <laughs> that's the only person i know that's referred to as wj no uh, i definitely i definitely did not teach warren johnson anything <laughs> but i appreciate the thought guys oh <laughs> uh, yeah see look warren johnson you know him Where'd it go? There he is. Who's who is WJ? That Charlie said that. Oh. Well, 
Let's see here. Man for Man, three of my favorite channels all in one. Well, that's on. awesome. <laughs> we appreciate y'all watching. We appreciate all of y'all taking yeah. time to you watch know, our show. It just occurred to me the main things that we've had happen in the last couple of weeks. We can't talk about yet. Yeah, I know. Right. We that's just, one thing I've learned about YouTube is when you've got things in the background that you're working on, you really want to talk about it, but you can't because there's other people involved. And then things might go awry. I hit mission impossible. I'm just <laughs> saying it. <laughs> but anyway, listen, listen, the first the first seminar I went to with David in David's garage, the basement. Everybody else in the class was like, who is this Charlie guy and why doesn't he shut up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the New York coming out in you. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's very bad. No, but no, wait a minute. Just a minute. Bless his soul. Can you remember Marvin at the of first, course. At the first uh, thingy? I mean, he was so glued to paying attention that he would be skipping. Uh, he was, yeah. uh, he'd be skipping in front of me asking questions. So I was just about to, right? We, we all missed out the time in the chair and put, put a gag on him. But Marvin well, was a smart was, guy. He yeah. was thinking about what was He's going on. He was thinking. And yes, he, he was. was he was a smart guy. The next point, right? Yeah. How many times did he ask me a question, which I said, you know, I'm just about to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. There's 186 people watching us right now, I think. If you're not subscribed to Charlie's channel, you really need to go over there, subscribe to him. And you go back and look at all of his porting videos, and you will see how much work and time and effort he puts into these things. I, I've watched you swirl port heads, man, all the way through. I was like, okay, let's see what he's done to it today. I'm I'm out of my mind with the swirl port. Those <laughs> those only float 165 stock. Yeah, you chased that rabbit all the way to the other side of the hole. Not just down the hole, but to the other side. The best, the best flow I got to date was 318 CFM out of that same cylinder head. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a big cylinder head, though. It's not yeah. small. It's probably 240 cc's. Yeah, that's big for a small block Chevy. Yeah, it is. But still, it flows 318. <laughs> the whole idea was was to run nine second quarter mile with the worst cylinder heads ever made. Which is the Chevy Swirl Port? There you go. I mean, that, it doesn't that, get any worse than that, does that's it? That's the one with the big lump of cast iron in. Yes, it does. Right. That's the so whole. Still, of the car I'm now. doing that. I'm doing this project, with my friend Stevie, and we're still looking for a block. We're still looking for a crank. We're still looking for a bunch of stuff for it, but uh, it'll get done. And a tunnel ram. We're looking to get it. Put a tunnel ram on it. Tunnel oh, ram yeah. off. Yes. It. Yes, yeah. I'm with you. I would love to put a tunnel ram on some swirl ports and then hurt some feelings. Tun tunnel rams make everything better. <laughs> That's my motto. Well, think about it. If I can get a little bit smaller valve to flow 300 CFM and then put a tunnel ram on it, I should be able to make some steam. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I am throwing up. A what link is? to your YouTube channel right now. So thank you so much, Andy. 178 people need to go there and subscribe to his. Uh, a lot of them are already there. A lot of those guys. I know a lot of these oh, guys. Oh yeah, you know yeah. the names. You I know, know a lot names. of these guys. I have anyway. Uh, the guys that watch my channel are really kind of diehard guys. If they oh, can yeah, get up they with are. me, they uh, they are they are into it. R Racer D. The small block Chevy head making. I meant it moved up. There we go. A small block Chevy head that flows 260 CFM, 182 CC foot, makes 700 horsepower on a 400 engine. Ooh. No, uh, that, so sound, that sounds tight to me. You no, you be running, you'd have better be a unicorn. 15 to 1 compression on oxygenated fuel, you might see it. No. Nah. Right. 
Come on. Who's going to say something? Come on. I, I don't think you can do it. No, I don't think Not so. with 260. It no, no, it ain't going to happen. 260 is like a, a dart 200 out of the box. Yeah. You're not getting well, look, you're not getting 700 out of a dart 200 out of the box. Let, let me say something here, which I think is very relevant. Back in the day when Trans Am was limited to uh, five liters, and I, I'm talking about uh, 19, probably around about 19, 87 ish. I did some dyno testing for uh, uh, an Australian driver, can't remember what his name was, and his engine builder came over uh, and showed me the flow figures on his um, cylinder heads. And they were only flowing 260, but we made 505 horsepower. That sounds that sounds doable, no, no doubt. Out of that. Now, the interesting thing was is he just come off some other person's well well-known person's dyno, and the engine he's only moved across town. He took <laughs> it off, he took the di engine off the dyno Saturday night after making a 550 horsepower pull, put it on my dyno and adapted it all up. And first thing Monday morning, we warmed it up, made a pull, and it made 45 horsepower less. I had a feeling that's what was going to happen. Drive your engines across town. It cuts horsepower. Yeah. It's a magic dyno. <laughs> yeah. And, and here's the thing. He was all ready to blame me. And I said, I can't help it if the other guy's dyno reads high, mine reads right. I do work for Cosworth. And the reason I do is because my calibrated. dyno reads right. You know, it, it's crazy. And that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. You know, these YouTube channels that you see a lot of dyno. You can do a lot of fudging on a dyno with oh, yeah. correction factors yeah. and things of that sort. Yep. Oh, sure. I have a whole video talking about it. Yep. The 306 with the E7 heads that we dyno, that turned out with a very small flat top at cam and made 361 horsepower. There were lots and lots of guys that said that was a very happy dyno. What do you have to say no, about that, David? It wasn't. <laughs> no. Right. When that was on the, that was on Terry's dyno. Yeah. When we compared that to the engine master's dyno, it was down on horsepower. I believe it. Right. We had it. Uh, we've had two engines come from engine masters to Terry's dyno. Mm -hmm. Right. And they made less horsepower. Not by much, but they made less horsepower. Right, so that dyno is not happy. It's right. Yeah. And there, I mean, there's a lot of different variables. You know, if you're dynoing an engine at, you know, 5,000 feet, let's say Denver, Colorado, then you come down to sea level and then you mess with your correction factors and everything else, you can get way out. Yeah, the hotter the load cell the dyno gets, the higher read. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. No. Charlie, to, just for those guys saying that's a happy dyno, does that mean that the drag strip times were happy? <laughs> they reflected that power output, right? That's a good question. Yeah. You know, that, that's another thing. I, that's like we're doing this stuff here with uh, the LS3. We're going to put it on the flow bench, see what it does, and say, okay, this is it, straight from AFR. We're going to put it on Sammy's truck, put it on the chassis dyno, and then we're going straight to the drag strip. You know, you don't see that type of stuff on other channels. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got two things to say about that AFR head, and I just saw it a little bit on the screen tonight. Yeah. LS3 is really too big a port stock. So I AFR agree. made it a little smaller. Yeah. Yep, yeah, they did. When and they put a little bit smaller like, valve in it. It's too, what? Sammy said it was uh, 260 some cc. Yeah, but the valves are less shrouded, so I'm thinking that it's going to show more flow. Even oh, though I, I agree, I think he more, said it was 240 or 245 cc's, so it's quite a bit smaller. Yeah. So let me ask you this: What size board is uh, is a uh, six? I'm not an LS guy. I'm not, not either. Probably six six zero uh, block or a six two block. Yeah. 
I guess we'll figure it's the all bigger that board, out. Not I've the 5-3. The 5-3 five, 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 three is the smaller bore. I've actually got to get up with Sammy to find out what that bore is that he has so that when we put it on the bench, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. get the picture and, right. Uh, LS LS three you can't you can't whack down the short side on them. Yeah, so Darren calls that a hypercritical short side radius. So you got to really pay attention to your air speeds on the short side. You can't just whack them down; it'll ruin it'll ruin the drivability of the port. Yeah. Let's see. Somebody was talking about flatheads, then, and I think it just disappeared out of view. Flatheads. Love the flatheads. I think it's just gone out of view. 79 model love the flatheads the engine crafting design is awesome well tell them your story yeah i um first v8 engine i ever modified was a flathead ford and i bought the engine all in parts for a very good price because the guy that i bought them off was facing an eight-year prison sentence so he had no use for them for eight years and the block was selected a board such that I ended up with 301 cubic inches with the stroke it had. It was a forged crank. Excellent. And uh, 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 anyway, built this motor that triple carbs on it, ported all the carburetors and the manifold, whatever this thing needed, right? D decent. Now, the nice thing about having all those inches is I could get a decent compression without crowding anything in the cylinder. I went and put it on, had it on a dyno. Now, there's a story in that. <laughs> I could not believe anyone could have a dyno shop that was in worse state of cleanliness, right? Believe it or not, I, I'm betting there was at least two inches of dirt <laughs> on the ground. It was like the floor was somebody's yard that had been trampled down and it was in a shed. And I thought, Jesus, this is terrible. Anyway, we, we dynoed it. It, yeah, he put the beam on it beforehand and it looked like it was all right. We dynoed it and it made the engine made 225 horsepower. <laughs> I was pissed off because I thought it ought to make at least 300 right now. Years later, <laughs> when I'm over here, right, I find 225 horsepower was really good. <laughs> That's a stout flathead. Yeah. Now, with what I know now, I am sure I can get 250 horsepower from a, a totally streetable flathead. I did kind of have a project lined up, but then my wife said, stop. You've got too many projects going on. We're cleaning now. out the projects, okay? Yeah, right. We're just doing and, stuff for fun. It, when I thought about this, I, I knew that my enthusiasm was overcoming my sensibilities. <laughs> I do. I like that. That was you do. You know, but not, I like how you much. phrased that. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I heard I, a really good one, the other uh, yesterday, right? And it goes like this. You don't have to worry about being the smartest guy in the room. You just have to concern yourself with being in the room with the smartest guy. Hmm. I've never heard that. One. That's that's when you're trying to find things out. That's when you're trying to better yourself. That's when you're trying to gain knowledge from somebody who can give you stuff that you don't already know. And I thought to myself, hey, God, doesn't that sound like me? See, see, that's like yesterday. I, I've got all those people that I can call on who know way more than it, any about everything than I do. That's like yesterday when Tom was over here talking turbo stuff. It was fun for me getting to see David geek out about his knowledge of it. You know what I'm saying? I love that. David loves to learn. That's right. That's yeah. the way we are. We love to learn. Yep. You know. Unfortunately, I went to that school of hard knocks and, you know, <laughs> yeah. F around and find out. There's no point in inventing the wheel a second time. No. Absolutely none. I have a Talk little bit different take on, on that oh. saying. Yeah. Talking what to you, Tom what? saved me inventing the wheel several times. 
So what, what you're saying? If, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. Oh, I, I, I that's like better. It. I, I like that one even better. Yeah, well done, Charlie. Can I quote you on that? Absolutely. That, that <laughs> You know what? You need to put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> it's not my saying. I heard it somewhere yeah, else. Know, it's but good. It's pretty good stuff. It's good. You know, you should be always listening to the smartest guy. Well, you know, that's like, look, Sammy, he's blown up enough LS engines, you know what I'm saying, to know what not to do. It you know what sense. I'm saying? That's how you learn. That's how yeah. you learn. Yeah. Uh, let me let me just answer Dennis here, right? Dennis, yeah. what's the LD uh, column on, oh, I can't read that. On DV and a few other quarters, yeah. flow seats. Lift, LD, to uh, lift to diameter, right? Yeah. So if you've got a two inch valve, right, and you lift it a half inch, the lift to diameter there is 0.25. There you go, right? You divide the lift into the diameter of the valve. So just so everyone knows, I'm going to give myself a plug here and Tony. Uh, Tony's Hot Rod Garage is now doing all of my merch for my channel. You nice. know, we started out with the Tunnel Ram Mafia shirt. Um, it's shop.unitymotorsportsgarage.com. Gunslinger Graphics. You know, if you're wanting to have uh, a shirt made or if you want to go buy one of my shirts, go check them out. I'm getting him lined up with yeah. David for his merch. Yep. So, thank you, Tony, for what you do. Did you ever get your computer situated uh, situation fixed? I did. I'm I'm charging. I'm good. Okay, so you charging? Right. What else could we actually? I do? have a question from the chat. What do you got? One of the what guys that knows me. He wants to know if those two eighty nine heads that I ported for David ever got dynoed. Two eighty nine. Yeah. Dino dose. I did. I I did two sets of two eighty nine heads. They float about two hundred and forty four cfm. They should have pulled almost five hundred horsepower. We did dyno those. Uh, that nobody has seen whoa, those. Whoa, whoa. Charlie, was this before or after I had my brain surgery? It was before. Okay, right. You've got to take what I say in light of the fact that. My I, I don't remember one side to the so. other of that brain surgery didn't leave me totally unimpaired for sure. Now I, I seem to remember we dynoed them, and, I, and I'll tell you why I think we dynoed them Terry's? because yeah, I think it was because I found the dyno test for one of them the other day because I was looking for it. Right. Huh. So we need to do something on that. Yeah. That would be great. I would love to know how they did. Yeah. Right. So. Because I know when, when David and I went to Terry's Dino, we, we did the E7 heads. We did three sets of E7 heads with the little tiny cam. That yeah. was all we got to Dino. Actually, I think we dynoed one set of aluminum heads also. Yeah. And the E7s trampled them. What was it? <laughs> it was... Uh, like a GT40 aluminum head? Oh, that yeah. That was, was my was a GT40. GT40X head. That was my old heads that, that I had. Was, yeah, they flowed like 270. Yeah, but... Uh, and what the they, beat them. Yeah. The port's too big. The floor's flat as a brick. I mean, yeah. Yep. It just shows you. It just shows you. It's the quality of flow. You, you know, know what? You can't, you can't overstate that. Energy. Yeah, poor energy. There you go. And poor air speeds, right? The, yep. the more well, even you get those air speeds, that that's going to work right into it. Yep. You got to have all that. You know, that's a funny thing. Yeah. No, Darren, right. Darren Morgan's expression on that. He said there's three important things for cylinder heads. Velocity, velocity, velocity and velocity. velocity. <laughs> and that's the truth. Uh he is exaggerating slightly, but only by about that much, right? He's making a point there, and that's that's the way it is. People chase flow numbers, 
too much and they don't I agree velocity enough well i'm gonna give an example on these trick flow heads here for the crown vic uh way back when when we first started doing this david had ported a set of pi heads yeah stock heads okay the flow numbers were fairly close to the trick flow it was like seven or eight I numbers like a lot of work into those he now. put a ton of work in it but when i dynoed the out of the box trick flow heads those things were up Blake 40 Blake horsepower Blake 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 and the flow number if you're looking just at flow numbers they weren't that much different they weren't that much different okay right. so there you go it's all about the combination of shapes and all that yeah you know Oh, uh, right. Uh, you just had we, we yeah. We have got David, our aerodynamicist, working on something for us. And one of the things I'm going to get him to do, uh, and I only thought of this last night, is what is the optimum shape for an intake port? Should how much downdraft should it have? Should it be coming in from, you know, uh, is there something better than what we normally see? Should it have a wide floor or a narrow floor? Well, yeah. Lots of things. Should it have a wide roof or a narrow roof? Here's the thing. Bingo. Anybody that's had any experience with the, the BMW two liter engine that came out just after World War II, the port came like straight down in it let, let, yeah here let's say here's the valve <laughs> port like this right then it went up like that so that it had like a s bend to it yeah was that better than it flowed like a toilet right um it did have a problem with the induction which of course it was now sticking straight up but i was thinking to myself a head like that on a v8 which is off at an angle Mm -hmm. And then put injection stacks on it. Boy, that would work. So racer D here, Mr. So can you make 700 horsepower with 260 CFM? Funny thing is super stock guys do it. The thing about it is if you've got a pocketbook, you can make about anything happen. You're going to have to, that would be a very, very far fetched number to get. But with enough compression and enough yeah. enough of everything, you could probably get it close to tickling it. You know, it, it's the it's same way if you take a 200, let's say 260 CFM head and you flow it on a 302 or put it on a 302 and dyno it and put it on a 351 and dyno it and put it on a 408 and dyno it you're going to make more power of course based off the engine size but it's going to be lower rpm yeah and it's not going to be as much horsepower per cubic inch yeah and the thing of it is those are raised ports now super stock guys they will actually raise the port they'll fill in the bottom they have to keep the same port volume if i'm not mistaken and so a lot of them are raised port heads a lot of trick stuff that average person is not going to pay for and remember andy you were just saying about the ford head oh yeah right one flowed the yeah the flow was number was slightly less wouldn't it yeah and it, it made 40 horsepower more it's not just about flow no raising the port and having the same flow can often be worth 20 or 30 horsepower. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's combustion mature. chamber shape, size. Yep. yep. There's many different aspects to it. Yep. Patterson Racing, 400 cubic inch, 10 to 1 compression, makes 700 horsepower. That's, that's great. Now, I'd like what, to see how much that engine costs if it really does that. What's the flow on the intake? He said 260 CFM. It's a super stock engine. It's super stock. Oh, yeah. well, it's, yeah, yeah. I, now, okay, I can believe that, right? With all the friction cutting deals that they come about it, and it, things like this and the little tricks, 
Now, I haven't been involved in super stock since way back, probably about 2002, 2003. Um, uh, my last involvement in that was I was porting the pumps, the oil pumps, to cut the oil pump loss. Yeah. Right. And the oil pressure at idle was next to nothing. Yeah, there's a lot more to make in power than flow numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on an engine such as super stock. Yeah. Yeah. And those super stock guys really work for the horse. And they spend thousands of dollars yeah. to get another they, five horsepower or like three horsepower. Horse think they make pro stock look cheap. <laughs> it, it's yeah. Right. So yeah. Um there's three categories in drag racing that require a little more than the extra effort, right? And I'd have to say the top one's pro stock, followed very, very closely behind by stock, followed by top fuel, right? Those guys who are running uh, in the stock classes, they they have to absolutely claw for everything they get well they? not only that but the entire car combination is so refined yep you know they're not wasting any horsepower going down that track nope that and they gain they gain their performance a hundredth of a second at a time max right and it's been going on for years and years and years I tell you, right now, if if I had to race in a class which would give me the hardest problems to get going in, it'd be stock, yeah. right? Not pro stock, stock. These guys don't get the credit. No, they really the don't. The ingenuity and the work they put into those engines, right? They I, really don't. Like I said, I've worked with a couple, right? I don't think they go to bed at night. I believe actually pro stock engines are limited at 10,500 nowadays. Yeah, yeah. They used to go to 11. Yeah. They when, used I, to. when I was doing some pro stock stuff back in the seventies, it was a 394 inch pro stock Frank Townsend was running. And that launched at 11,400. Now it never insane. didn't make any horsepower there, but they used the inertia of the motor. The flywheel, yeah, sure. Motor. Yeah, the mm -hmm. whole motor was a flywheel. Yep. Right? Uh, the engine never went above 9.8 after that. Yeah. As it went through the gears. So instead of having a, they couldn't take any more weight out of the flywheel and clutch. They wanted to get a good launch. So they used the whole en uh, energy stored in the crankshaft. Mm -hmm. So they revved it as high as it it could to get the most stored energy and what they did was they launched on a slightly higher gear now nothing would show this up until the guy in the other lane shifted and they went another five miles an hour before they shifted yeah. and the cars would go like this incremental yeah and uh just for the record that car beat J grumpy jenkins to the final at, at uh, palm uh, at uh, Quick, uh, uh, in California, what's the track there? You got, uh, what is it, Penome? Or uh, out there at Ontario? Yeah, um, right. Uh, shut down Grumpy Jenkins after he pulled a whole shot on our guy, right? Beat him for ET, drove around him for the top speed, right? That's how much that extra RPM paid off, using the engine as a flywheel. Yeah. I mean, he had to carry the crankshaft anyway. He might as well put as much energy into as possible, which meant he had to have a valve train, which would go 11.5 when the peak power was somewhere around about 9.5, yeah. right? And, and, you know, the power curve had dropped off by 10. So... He got another fifteen hundred RPM in the stratosphere valve train. Yeah. <laughs> so Charlie, this yes. is a question I want to ask you. Sure. All right. 
you did work on W two heads. I did. They what? were picked up today, as a matter of fact. I I have an infatuation with some W two heads. Like I want to build an engine with W twos on them at some they're, point. They're a nice design. They really are. I um, mean, that's what I have on my, my Chrysler. Yeah, you had W nines. I think it was. Yeah. The guy that I did them for wants to. He brought a 340 block over here. We sonic the whole block. It was not acceptable to make, you know, 700 plus street horsepower. So he got, he took that block out of here today and he has another, he has, he has a couple blocks. He has another 340 block. He also has a Chrysler race block. That mm -hmm. would be nice to build and put the W2s right on them. The W2s were opened up to a 208. And I, and I we couldn't get 1.6 valves because they were 200 long. Mm -hmm. We had to actually, I had to get 1.625s and machine them down to 1.6. Right. But that worked out really well. We got some nice flow numbers out of them. And the port is not huge. They're going to they're gonna make nice power. And they're going to be fed with a tunnel ram, which I know makes you happy. Well, I'm trying to read all these responses here, right? But hey, I got a guy wanting you to port some 4.62 valve heads. <laughs> Only if they're trick flows. Right? I mean, if you want to it port PI so heads. It's disappointing porting those stock, stock heads when you know you can get such a huge horsepower increase with these, right? It's It's... It's night and day. Yeah, it really it, is. It, yeah. We, he, actually we, asked, he actually asked me to do some 4.6 stuff for him. And I said, if we start off with the trick flows, yes. <laughs> we, we, uh, we did a set of SBO heads, which was Ford's racing head, you know, and it's still the same thing. The intake valve is on the wrong side of the camshaft, okay? I don't know what Ford was thinking. They would have been better off to take that 2.3 head that Thomas had and just put two of them on there and call it a day. But did they do that? No. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you have a hard time understanding the whys and wherefores. Now, there are occasions when we never get to hear of the reasons for it. And when you do hear the reasons, it's not an engineering reason at all. It is something completely political. oh yeah political right. it's something uh, emissions or something it, it could be a number of different things yeah. i'll see here i want to see what indy's heads and tunnel ram intake that is actually on the list i don't know if it's going to happen it'll be next year okay now wait a minute wait a minute we're talking about mixed up balls right. it's going okay. to be down the road because my plan for that truck this year is to race it, enjoy it, yeah. drive it, and then once the newness wears off of it for me, then we'll tear it back apart. Yeah. <laughs> now, one thing that I think we're going to do, you have not actually okayed it yet, you kind of nodded it, is we're going to do some aerodynamic tests. Oh, now, yeah. This Definitely is where David Woodruff, our aerodynamicist, comes in. Now, David has suggested some moves we can do with pieces of plywood. It's crazy. The thing right. of it is, when you got an F100, a 71 F100, that's like trying to make a brick go through no, air. No, 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 no. Mail bar shoot. It's a parachute. Okay, yeah. The drag coefficient on it must be about 0. 0.7. And let me tell you, you fix that, right? We can. I bet you we can take the down. motor out and put it in something else. Brute force. <laughs> we can get the drag coefficient down to some somewhere around 0. 0.5. The the thing of it is, when you're going 130 miles an hour in that truck, you know you're going 130 miles an hour. There is no the doors are flopping back and forth, and it's like, okay, I'm ready for this to end. Okay. The top the top of the door sometimes pulls off the roof. <laughs> The bent windows are sitting there shaking, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. That's why Andy races eight mile. That's right. <laughs> right. Well, not only that, but that's pretty much all we have here in the South. You know, unless you go to a big track and they're never open to the public. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Concord. 
Yeah, right. Z-Max. Z-Max. That's, a, that's an awesome It's the Taj Mahal Mahal of drag strip, yeah. and it's never open. Right. Um, so there you go. That's a shame. But it must be expensive to open a drag strip like that. How do the trick flow compare to four valve heads? Interesting. Up top, they outflow them. Down low, the four valve kicks their butt because you got a ton of valve area. Yeah, but, the, but the horsepower is ran the other way. Yeah, the horsepower is the other way. The the, the uh, trick flow heads uh, will beat the four valve and three valve heads for torque mm -hmm. all the way to around about. So I think it's somewhere between 45 and 5,000. It's closer to 5, right. 48, yeah. 49. And then the four valve heads, it starts to diverge. Going, right? It starts to diverge. At and uh, uh, they will make 30 horsepower more on a 4.6 at the top end. But if you are going to put these on a, a road motor, right, the, the two valve heads make the 4.6 oh, It's wow. a 5.0. Yeah. Because they make more torque, and you can pull, you can, you can yank the front bumper off of the four valve car, but if given enough room, he's going to go back around you. Yeah, I would say, on a typical street car with not a huge stall in there, that on the eighth mile, the two valve heads would probably hold their own, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, until we started getting very, uh, how shall I say, upmarket with the mods, you know, a lot of RPM, more stall on the converter and lower gears or, and all that stuff, so that the four valve engine can make use of that high RPM capability. Right. One of the things that a lot of people don't talk about between two valves and four valves is how they handle the swirl and how mm -hmm. they and how they handle the fuel that's mixed with the air. Completely yeah, different. You know, completely and different you, animals. You did see my polyquad thing, did you? I certainly did. It was great. Excellent okay. video. Okay, because the what you were talking about there was what I covered in that. And I just wondered that sounds like Charlie hasn't seen it. Well, yeah, there's, wow. there's so many different ways to accomplish what oh, you're doing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're two right. different size ports, two different velocity ports, two different yeah, Can but if you look at the patterns, you look at my patterns on that, you'll understand that I've been in the patent business quite a bit, and I think I've covered every loophole possible, right? Uh, there, there's about eight different ways in which you can achieve it, which I mentioned in there. Now, some of them are, yeah, it's not the easiest way to do it, but when I did my original one, I combined every single one I could think of so that anyone that wanted to do this without paying the patent royalty would have to have such a poor version of it that it wouldn't be worth doing. <laughs> right. So and I'm still thinking that somebody has. Uh, uh, done it, done it and not told me about it right so yeah, I'm, I'm sure i am the thing. on the hunt for whoever that is <laughs> so the lsa on mixed up boss it's actually on a 108 and it went completely against what everybody said i would go with and you know it came up just shy of 1.4 it was 1.39 foot pounds per cube so how good are those exhaust ports in reference to the intake ports? They're really good. They're really good. That can, that can I'm about willing to bet if it was probably on a 110, it would probably do better because the head is that good. I believe it. Being honest. Yeah, those, there's, we got too many projects here. Too, but that head has got, so potential, much potential way past what we've done well i know that being a uh, strider at efi they've pushed it past 500 cfm greg brown's had it over 500 cfm i know that tj strange has made right at 1200 horsepower from 400 cubic inch with it 
So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty that much like how me. how much power do you want to make with this small block? There you go. Mm. John, you're exactly right. Z Max is way too big, doesn't have any personality, and it's hot as crap with all the asphalt. No shade, no trees. When I was working for NHRA, I thought I was going to die of a, a heat stroke out there. Uh, that reminds me, I went to a drag strip in Australia, right? It was like something that had been put into a garden or park. Beautiful, right? It The pits had trees, uh, not the pits, the paddock where all the cars were, had little things with the trees coming up. Oh, yeah. So they, you had shade and all that. So it was cars amongst the trees. Yeah. And all the grass was nicely mowed and, and that. And I thought, wow, this is this is the most beautiful drag strip I've ever been to. Here's a little FYI for you about what? Back in 2008, David and I was over at Z-Max together for Pink's All Out with my Mustang. You remember because I had the grudge race with Tony Brown and his 55 Chevy. I've forgotten all about that. Do you have all those photos? Because that would be... I have no that, idea. that was a fun day. But I remember thinking to my... How, how many RPM did Tony turn that? 283? Must have been 10, 5 or 11,000 yeah. RPM. Yeah. It was really good because we ran each other. He's the... I, he was super At stock, super stock eye. I don't quote me on that, but it was... He's record holder at that particular time with 298 inch and i raced him with the 4.62 valve and we were side by side the entire track he beat me he ran a 11 11 12 to my 11 22 i think it was there's videos of it on youtube yeah Oh, that's all I can remember of it, Andy. I can't remember yeah. your car at all. I remember Tony's car having this scream. Oh, yeah, that thing turning 9,500 RPMs, and I was over turning seven thinking I was doing something. Yeah. We haven't seen Tony for ages. I know. We ought to get him over. We're coming up on the two-hour mark, y'all. Anything else you want to talk about? Because we're getting ready to shut her down. You've got 10 seconds. <laughs> Charlie, can we shut you off so we've got a full screen here? Because I'm having no problem. Here. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Charlie, it was really fun. It's, We're going to do this on a regular basis. I'm that would be fantastic. I would love that. Tell Carla, thank you. Yeah. No problem. I will. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Yeah. Have a good night. So I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. I want to thank all of y'all for coming out here to watch this we covered a lot of topics didn't we yep yep uh want to thank everyone who donated super chat money we appreciate it don't forget go to unity motorsports garage and subscribe to the channel if you're not because david's kicking my butt and subs you're over fifty-one thousand now yeah coming up to fifty-one thousand five hundred. yeah right so uh, Tony, is it okay if we give you a quick call after we do this? Just say yes. Tony's Hot Rod Garage. Yeah. Calling Tony's Hot Rod Garage. This is Earth to Tony's Hot Rod Garage. <laughs> <laughs> Hope y'all have a great night. Thank y'all for it. And uh, we will catch y'all later. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, been a great weekend, even though it's been hard work. So we really got to finish off a, a nice weekend yeah it, it was so thanks a lot fellas and gals i must not forget the gals right never now, how could i do that we can't forget the gals. no no i got a wife that won't let me do that right but um we will see you in two weeks and hopefully by then we've sorted out some of our high profile guests right? yep my fault they're not here is because I sprung it on them with not enough notice. That's all right. We'll we'll get all this figured out. All right. So good night, y'all. Cheers. <laughs>